right. What's the scoop? How did you know? <laughs> well, I knew you wouldn't ask me for my fashion advice. Everything I wear matches. <laughs> okay, Angela, this is really important. The kind of thing that only a fellow woman would understand. Well, you came to the right fellow. Okay, you're the only person over 15 that has ever heard this. Jesse asked me to go steady. Oh! 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 That's so wonderful. I'm so happy for you. Oh, I just love Jesse. He's so cute and he's so smart and he's a real social conscience. Oh, tell me, last night we had a walkout on Snow White because of its degrading portrayal of dwarfs. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to... Hey, oh, oh, way. The Who's the Boss podcast. I'm Tori. And I'm Kevin. We are here to rewatch and discuss every single episode of Who's the Boss. Yeah. Today we're going to cover season four, episode 15. Are we halfway through? We're more than halfway through. Oh, you mean the season? Yeah. Yes, we are. But we're not halfway through the show until we're done with this season. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. No, but I mean like this season is what yes. I mean, four. We only have, hang on. Let me well, see yeah, I mean, here. the fact that it's 15, there's usually 28. One, I think there's 28. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more episodes this season. And then we are done oh, there with was 25. season four. Yeah, I don't you, know. You figured no, this out. Something's wrong. That's there okay. There is only 24. Why do we have 10 left? I don't know. Who knows? We'll figure that out later. Okay, we're covering season four, episode 15. Mm. The title is Steady As She Goes. It first aired on Tuesday, January 19th, 1988, and the TV Guide summary says, Samantha decides to go steady with Jesse, leaving mm. Tony at the bottom of her people to see list. Wow. Poor Tony. I know. Okay, what do you have? It's the same thing. I mean, the other the other woman who you normally leaves the more entertaining one. How ones, do you know it's the, a woman? I don't know. You're right. Oh. Oh I don't. I thought <laughs> okay, okay. I don't. I just by reading her name, I'm not gonna say your name because I don't I just right, right. It, their name. You're right. It, the way the name looks it I it could be anybody. I didn't mean to call you out. I legitimately thought there was a reason. No, why I and I don't know why I just assumed no. that. Um, Tony is upset when he finds out Samantha has gone steady with Jesse. Samantha, meanwhile, feels even worse for not having her father's approval. So it's similar to what yeah. you have. There. Yeah, yeah. You know. So the other lady, both good, or the other person's not doing it anymore. I guess not. They're not in this. Aww. Not this week. I'll have to check next week. All right, that's a bummer. Uh, this episode was written by Joe Fish. This is his first of six Who's the Boss episodes. Oh, okay. I was wondering. Steady As She Goes, Marry Me Mona, also this season. Okay. A Jack Story, that'll be next season. Party Double, not sure. Sounds like it could be season six. Operation Mona, and Sit Down and Be Counted. Mm. I feel like those are season seven. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. <clears throat> yeah, he it's also... funny how writers just come and go and do a few episodes and then leave and... Yeah. Or whatever. I mean, yeah, that's the way like it is. He's but. doing like an episode. Well, he has two this season and then possibly two next season. Yeah. And like then, maybe they just assign them out and you have so many a season. Yeah. It's interesting. He also wrote for Punky Brewster, All is Forgiven. I don't know that. The New mm. Gidget, A Different World Step by Step. And then his episodes were also used for The Upper Hand, which is the British version of this show. And Third Rock from the Sun and Boston Common. So when this episode opens, Tony is making a reservation with a man named Henry, who he is very familiar with. Tony knows everyone who works at every restaurant in this town. <laughs> Remember when he called the pizza place and two on a billboard? He was very familiar. He loved the pizza guy. Yeah, exactly. He said, love you. Uh, so now he's on the phone <laughs> with Henry. <laughs> he tells Henry he's bringing five hungry hombres ready to chow down on his Peking duck. And he said, listen, make sure you make a lot because Samantha's coming. So Samantha, this must be her favorite. Then, I know. And f f f hang on. So <laughs> okay. I was very confused at the beginning of this episode. Why? Because first of all, he said, I'm bringing five hungry hombres. I know. Which means men. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Dudes. That's like so slang. I thought he was going with his, oh, with his buddies, buddies to the restaurant. Okay. And but then he says you better make a lot more because Samantha's coming. Right. Yeah, but I I think he's just using it in the and then, slang. Uh, and way. then at first I thought he was calling a, a Mexican restaurant because so he's I. saying hombres. Right. But I it's did. a fish 
or um, a Chinese Chinese restaurant. restaurant not fish. Chinese um, Shanghai, and I can't remember what the second word was. Yeah, I'm so confused by that, but <laughs> I, I figured it out. Obviously, I thought I look. I actually looked up what like the um, equivalent to the word ombre in yeah. Chinese. Oh yeah, yeah, and nothing. Th- no, it, I found a word that, and I did the pronunciation. Sounded like Chen, um, oh. and that was what I could find as far as like meeting people. So yeah, maybe he should have used that term since they were going, or maybe just say I'm bringing five people. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Got, got to do my home brace. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't. Need, it's so out of context. It doesn't make sense. Anyway, go ahead. Angela walks into the living room right as Tony is saying, "And don't forget, no chopsticks for Angela." You know, like what happened? <laughs> and then he's joking with the person on the on, with Henry, saying, "It's still on the ceiling, huh?" And then he's like, "Okay, I'll see you later." So Angela hears him say that, and she looks at him and says, "It wasn't my fault." Oh, before Tony hangs up the phone, he tells. Henry to keep walking. Keep on walking. Right. Walk. W O K. That's like I-N-G. rocking, but with a walk. <laughs> no. Oh, Tony, uh, such a questionable. cheese ball. Yeah, I mean, as far as being racially insensitive, yeah, y- yeah I guess so. Um, but Tony's just a cheese ball oh, all I around. I know. He thinks it's so funny. So Angela says, It wasn't my fault. What happened? And of course, uh, Angela can't use chopsticks. Right, and they got stuck in the ceiling. Right. No, no. Oh, wait. Is the chopstick still in the ceiling? That's what I think he said. Oh, she says they have a very low ceiling. Right. So did she oh, put her it says in? no, no. It says still on the ceiling. So my thought was that oh. she somehow flung her food off the chopstick and it hit the ceiling. Oh, I thought the chopsticks were. That stuck actually in is the much ceiling. funnier, and they yeah. should have made it so that the chopstick well, that's was what actually I still see, in the so. ce- ceiling. Right. <laughs> like Mulder and his pencils in the ceiling. There's right. just like chopsticks above the table where they sit. Yeah. Okay, now Tony asked Jonathan. I even I, I even still got that out of on the ceiling, like they're in. On, I don't know. Okay, yeah, maybe I'm you're right, and that it. is much funnier if yeah. the chop, if the actual chopstick like is somehow stuck, stuck, to stuck the on the ceiling. <laughs> maybe they got stuck there with the food. I who knows. He asks Jonathan, "Are you gonna get the octopus again?" And Jonathan says, "Yes, it's mm. really great when that little pouch squirts ink all over Ugh. the rice. It looks like black spit." That's gross. I feel like we're gonna lose this. Jonathan could grow up to be a serial killer storyline at some point. You think? Yeah. All right. I don't feel like that carries out through the rest of his time on, like, when he's older. It carries out. But he has said quite a few creepy things this season. (laughs) I I think it's just more like he's a little gross boy. Like he's yeah, that's true. Yeah. Not that he's a serial killer, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know what they were going for. Well, because like, remember he had like the reptile part in this lunchbox, and and then he was talking about. What his lizard guts look like when he dropped a rock on it? Like, oh, was that an accident or was it not? I don't know. I don't know. Then Angela says, is anyone in the mood for Italian? So she's done with the idea right, of going to the Chinese. The <laughs> right. Much like, much like the lizard guts with the meatloaf. Right. She wants to completely pivot and now have something else for dinner. Now, Mona comes in in what we would now call cultural appropriation. <laughs> yeah. At the time, though, like you would just think, oh, it's really beautiful, and it is a beautiful dress. And my, I actually have a dress very similar to this that uh-huh. my aunt had custom made for herself. Um, must have been the '60s or the '70s, right? But now you would never. Well, one, I can't fit into it anymore. But two, you would. Not, it's not really appropriate to wear this. Out in public. Yeah. Or I, I guess, guess in not. your house, because why would you? I guess not. Yeah, it's just considered cultural appropriation. So oh. she. But like, why? I'm trying to get the reference of why he calls her Monska. I don't know. At first, I thought he said Monster, but no, you're he right. Says it Monska, does sound like and Monska. It has something to do with maybe the dress. Like, I don't know. Oh. It's, there's probably something ska that means some kind of. Okay, so then that could be some even, kind of right. It gets it's even like a Chinese worse. reference that we're not getting. Right, yeah. it is definitely. He's gets combined with her name. Okay, and I tried to look it up and I couldn't find it. Hmm. Okay, well, <laughs> we'll just we'll just move so on. So we're going with Monska and moving on. <laughs> so he says, "Are you all decked out for Henry's Peking Duck?" And she says, "No, I'm all decked out for Henry." 
So Mona has a crush Henry on the owner of the restaurant. Yes. <laughs> and she says he always slips the cutest little notes, fortunes in my cookies. Do you think he's really it's, making... That's filthy. <laughs> that's the filthiest thing. I, when I saw that, I'm like, <laughs> he slips the... What is it? The cutest little fortune Something in like my that. cookie? But wait... Oh, so yeah, That's you're filthy. taking it even further. Yeah, she says he slips the cutest little fortunes into my cookies. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, she says cookie. Cookie. Oh, oh okay. But the Which YouTube, makes it worse. The YouTube is rough with the closed captioning. And yeah. She literally says cookie. I bet that had double meaning filthy. that we would have. Yeah, I didn't even go there. I'm ashamed I did, of immediately. myself. Of I went there immediately. Of course you did. Now, Samantha comes in, and she says, hey, guys, I got to go change. And she goes to go run upstairs. And Tony says, no, you don't have to change. We're going to Shanghai. And what does he say? Okay, hang on. I'm sorry. There are my clothes. Nashari. My clothes captioning does say cookies, but I thought I oh, heard okay. cookie. Okay, because mine All does, right, too. Okay, <laughs> that's a little less dirty. <laughs> But okay, even still, maybe Henry's writing special dirty limericks to her and then putting them in her fortunes. Mm. Or, I mean, her cookies. Ah, Mona, the life of Mona. I know. What it is to be Mona. I don't know. So, yeah. Sam comes in. She says she has to change. Tony says, you don't have to change because we're going to Shanghai Nashari for dinner mm. for uh, your favorite Peking duck. She's like, I can't go to dinner tonight because I have plans with Jesse already. Tony says, come on again. You're spending every spare minute with that kid. Right. You even canceled out on the Ranger game. I'm sorry. Is Rain- Are the Rangers baseball? No, hockey. Oh, okay. That's hockey. why they New sounded even less familiar to me than any other sports team. Right, which is another discovery we learn, learn in this episode is that Tony is a New York Rangers fan and he, not an Islanders fan. Why would he be an Islanders fan? I know. It makes more sense that he's a Rangers fan. I don't... Okay, but I'm being serious. Why would oh, he be an Islanders? Oh, because the Islanders are not... Like, the New York Rangers are more like people who live in the city. New York City would be Rangers fans. It's much like how there's y- Yankee fans and Is it Mets Islanders fans. like Long Island? Long Island. Oh, I see. Okay. So, Gotcha. It's just like so Yankee, it's like New the York Yankees, team. more people like from the city and stuff would be, I mean, Yankees and Mets fans are whatever, but, yeah, I never but like if it's from Queens, it'd be Mets or in the Bronx, it'd be Yankees. So, because the Yankees play in, in the Bronx. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> but now we learn Tony is a Rangers okay. fan. Okay. <laughs> yes, he is. I didn't even know that there was a. Later on, he puts on a Rangers jacket. Well, yeah, he has, he's, he, yeah, she's got it. So. Right. He's. She says, how about tomorrow? Oh, I can't do tomorrow. And then she's like, how about Sunday? Oh, actually, I can't do Sunday. And then she's like, yeah, we'll keep in touch. Uh. Tony's a little disappointed here because he Sam isn't able to spend as much time with him now that she seems to be seeing a lot of Jesse. Yes. Tony says, I'll have my people call your people. Mm. And then he says, are you kidding me, Sam? Like, I hardly see you anymore. I miss you. We all do. And Jonathan says, I don't. Mm, that's because she's not nice <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, it's just a, a little brother thing to say. Angela says, it's good to be honest about your feelings, but we don't want to hear that. <laughs> but we don't want to hear that. What would I have said to the kids? We don't need your commentary. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> uh, Sam says, you know, Dad, this is really important. We're going to the observatory because Saturn... Is aligning with Antares? Is that what she says? Yeah. And it only happens once every hundred years. Tony asks her, can't you catch it next time? And then he realizes he's being kind of ridiculous. So he's like, okay, you know, that's fine. Go have fun. Samantha goes over to Angela and says, Angela, come help me put put together an outfit because I need to look great in the dark. All right. And Angela's like, okay. And so she goes running up the stairs with Sam. Tony says, gee whiz, Mona. Gee whiz. <laughs> this is serious. She never turns down Peking Duck. <laughs> what is he? It's this Leave It the Beaver? Is it <laughs> Wally and Beaver having a conversation? <laughs> gee whiz. And Mona's like, congratulations, Tony. You are the proud father of a perfectly normal teenage girl. Right. But Tony's not enjoying this. He says, it's murder. It's murder, I tell you. <laughs> murder? Like, again. He's extra goofy in this episode. Oh, no. Why? Oh, no. It's... And then he asks Mona, how did you get through these years with Angela? She says, easy. I sent her to school in Switzerland. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well. So now let's just take a step back. Right. We know that Angela at some point went to a regular high school because that's where she wanted to go out with 
the loser from Walk on the Mild Side, who's named right. the snake, Jake the Jake snake. Jake the snake, or, I think. Then we know that she went to Montague Academy because right. that's where Samantha wanted right. to go. Now, apparently, she also went to school in Switzerland. Wow. So how much schooling did Angela have before she finally got to college? I don't know. That's fancy, though. <laughs> did she do one year at each school? Yeah, maybe. We don't know. Yeah, it's whatever fits. And then also, as we know with Angela's history, she wasn't really dating a lot. So Mona didn't really have these same issues. Mm. Unless she wasn't as big of a nerd as everyone makes her out to be. It's whatever fits the storyline exactly, for the episode you're on. Now, when they, Sam and Angela get up to the room, Angela says to Samantha, all right, what's the scoop? And Angela, uh, Samantha's like, how did you know? And she said, because I know you didn't bring me up here to ask me for fashion advice. Everything I wear matches. I know, it's funny. <laughs> yeah. And it was cute because you could tell Angela was excited to be taken included. up to the room and included. Yes, but also a little bit like, why is this happening? So Sam says, okay, this is really important. It's the type of thing that I can only tell another fellow woman. And you're the only person over 15 that has heard this. Mm. Jesse asked me to go steady. Oh, boy. Yes, Angela's very excited. She squeals. She hugs her. And she says, I'm so happy for you. She's like, Jesse's such a great guy. He's so cute and he's smart and he has a real social conscience. And Sam's like, I know. Last night we had to walk out of Snow White because it, it's degrading portrayal of dwarves. <laughs> God. <laughs> I mean, Jesse really was quite ahead of his time. He was. I applaud him. He was. Yeah. And then Angela says, don't tell him that I've seen the movie seven times. Oh, boy. He wouldn't be able to get over it. I mean, no. He would have to sit Angela down. They would have a long discussion about it. Sam says, you know, can you believe it? I always pictured myself with like the football the captain of the football team. I can't believe that I fell for someone with depth. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> then Angela says, well, that's often how it happens. Like, the guy you fantasize about isn't who you end up being with. And they start talking about who Angela um, fantasized about when she was a kid. And she said, at first it was the good humor man. <laughs> <laughs> Something about a guy with a change purse. Is that what she said? Yeah. A change belt. That's change belt. Was. Because the good humor man was... Um, He's the ice cream ice guy, cream right? Man. yeah. It's something about a guy with ice cream for me. Forget about the change belt. Yeah. Then Sam says, I kind of had eyes for the warm pretzel man. So, uh, Angela says, when I got older, I had this romantic vision of a businessman, you know, very Brooks Brothers wearing a pinstripe suit, a vest, a tie, and right then Tony walks in, who I should add is wearing a white sweatshirt. Mm. And Angela says, a white sweatshirt. And then she's like, I mean, a white dress shirt. Mm. But she's been yeah, caught. Too late. Yes. Because the guy you fall in love with isn't usually who you would picture yourself with. Tony says, do you have my white... Um, I'm sorry. He comes in and asks Sam, do you have my Rangers jacket? And she's like, oh yeah, sorry. And she gets up and hands it to him. She says, I'm sorry if it smells like Chanel number no. five. So Tony sniffs it, and then he's like, uh, whatever. It's going to mix, he says, it's going to mix with well with my brute. <laughs> like, which I guess this is cologne. Yes, pro of course. Is. That sounds like very my brute. Tony. That sounds like he'd wear brute. Yeah, or Old Spice, even. Yeah. Uh, the same thing. Brute's the same thing. Really? Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Then he says, I heard squealing. What's going on? Angela says, oh, I thought I saw a mouse, but it was actually just Sam's bunny slippers. Terrible, terrible liar. I know, I know. Then Tony says, I've told you a million times when you're not wearing those things, lock them up. Really? Yeah. The bunny slippers have been a problem in the past with no, people I thinking? Just, I went with that Tony's just trying to be funny, and he knows that they're really talking right. about something. Right, true. Okay. Like, he's showing how ridiculous this is. Right. <laughs> So he says, okay, well, let's get going because my egg drop soup is getting cold. Then he leaves and he kind of turns to look to see if anyone's going to follow him. And they're not. They're both just standing there with their arms around each other, smiling. And Angela's having the time of her life right now. Like, this is the closest she's going to have to a daughter. And this is 
probably also some of the stuff she missed out on when she was an actual teenager. Mm-hmm. So she really wants in on this conversation. So she asked Samantha, when are you going to break it? Break the news to Mr. Chanel number five. <laughs> and <laughs> no, Sam's, I didn't catch that. Yeah. And Sam's really worried about it. She says, you know, what am I, how do I tell him? What is he going to say? Where do I hide? Right. But Angela says, ah, he'll be fine. You know, the best way to handle this is just to be direct and be honest. Sam's like, okay, um, I'll be direct and I'll be honest and I'll tell him the next time Saturn aligns with Antar- Antares, <laughs> which we all know is w- 100 in 100 years. years. Yes. But Angela says, oh, don't underestimate your father. He loves you, you know, and people grow and people change. Has Angela met Tony? I know. He doesn't grow and he doesn't change. No. He's going to completely lose his shit. Yes. Which is also kind of ridiculous. But, I mean, I, it, this is a really cute episode. I love this episode. I should st- start off saying that. It's just funny how, like, she's he's going to have such a hard time with her going steady. But it's not... She's almost 16 here. So what does he expect is going to happen? Right, exactly. And she's doing a lot less worse things than he was doing at her age. That's a good point. Yeah. So let's everybody just calm down. So Sam's like, yeah, you know, people change, people grow, people also explode. But (laughs) Angela's like, you know, he might surprise you. Yeah, right. Now downstairs, Mona's getting hungry and she's getting hangry. Yeah, she is. She says, what is going, what's the holdup? My grandson is hungry. And then Jonathan says, no, I'm not. Jonathan gets the worst lines. I know, I know. Mona's like, if I say you're hungry, you're hungry. Jonathan's like, okay, well, fine. Like, you know, then get them to come down here. They ask what's happening, and Tony says, I don't know. They're just they're up to your, they're doing girl things, and I don't want to rush them. Yeah. Mona's like, I'll I'll handle it. So then she just yells, Angela, get your butt down here. Yeah, that's one way to handle it. Yeah. Now the doorbell rings, and in walks Jesse. He's holding flowers in one hand. And a melon? Is that some yeah, kind of melon? Yeah, a melon. Okay, in the well, other. It looks like a cantaloupe, but I don't know. Definitely a melon. Yeah. So he's like, I brought something for you and for something for Samantha. So Tony's like, oh, the flowers are beautiful. I'll go put them in a vase. Right. It's funny. <laughs> it is cute. He gives him back the flowers, and then he takes the melon. And, oh, actually, Mona, Mona takes ta- the melon. Yeah, Mona takes the melon. Yeah, and she's like, all right, come on, Jonathan, let's go. So she and Jonathan go into the kitchen. I guess they just needed to get them out of the room. Jesse says to Tony, did Sam talk to you? And he's like, oh, yeah, you know, she told me. And at first I was upset. I'm going to miss her, but hey, just more duck for me. Jesse says, well, that's one way of looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> Jesse's thoroughly confused. I know, and but he agrees with Tony, so it's like... <laughs> yeah. Sure, He's yeah, like, sure. Makes there must sense. be some metaphor in there with a duck that I just don't understand. Samantha comes down the stairs and Jesse hands her the flowers and says, These are for you. And she's like, Oh, thank you. Okay, well, we better be going. She's trying to rush him out. And Jesse turns to, to Tony before they leave and he's like, Tony, thanks. You know, thank you for being so understanding. And Sam's like, Understanding about what? And he says, Oh, we, you know, we had a talk and he's, he's cool with it. He says it's just more duck for him. I know. Which <laughs> he's again, like, makes Maybe no she sense. knows what that means. I don't know. I'll just, I'll try it. And you notice after he says that, they cut back to Tony and he's snapping. Oh, away. of course. I know. The oh, snapping. That, oh, I do kind of recognize that Rangers emblem. Yeah. That's a cute jacket. It's still the, it's their same logo now. Nice. That jacket's pretty awesome. He's snapping away. <laughs> and Jesse says, He's so colorful. But mm. Sam's like, Jesse, I don't think we're talking about going steady here. And Tony says, going steady? And then Jesse says, going steady? Who said anything about going steady? Yep. And Sam's <clears throat> like, you did. And he's like, no, no. I wanted us to have a mutually exclusive paired relationship. <laughs> it's like, a what? I know. Jesse is the 1988 version of Gwyneth Paltrow. What was that that she said when her and her husband got divorced that they had a conscien- conscious I am, I don't uncoupling know. i think is what she called it that's what this reminds me of oh, all right. they didn't divorce they had a conscious uncoupling sam asks him where did you get an idea like that he says i read it in new york times magazine the about men column sam's like well you should have read the about sam column because yeah. i want to go steady but Jesse says, that's so, it's so conventional and like, it's archaic. Tony, how about you? You tell us what you think as an impartial person here. 
And Sam's like, impartial, he's been turned down for jury duty eight times. And he certainly is not going to be impartial about this either. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then he says, you know, I think that you don't need to go steady. Jesse's saying, you know, we don't need labels. It's so yesterday. But that's really what Sam wants to have. Jesse is like, well, that's why I, you know, I'm talking about having this mutual exclusive paired relationship. And Tony's like, what is that? And he said, well, you know, we have a psycho-spiritual interfacing of goals and values. <laughs> Tony's like, in English, we don't go out with anyone else but each other. Hmm. Tony's like, isn't that what going steady is? <laughs> right. <laughs> and then Jesse's like, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, okay, Sam, we can go steady if you want to. So Tony still didn't get his way. <laughs> Andy helped Jesse out. <laughs> So Sam's all excited, like, okay, great. So she gives her dad a big kiss on the cheek, and she's like, okay, I'll see you later. And then Jesse says, you know what, Tony? You're wise beyond your years. I know, that's funny. (laughs) And then they leave. Oh, and Sam says, if we're going to go steady, I need a ring. (laughs) That escalated quickly. Yeah, I know, right? And Jesse's like, "Um, how about my save the wheels pin? (laughs) She's like, okay, that's fine. And they they leave. (laughs) Save the wheels. I know. Tony's just left there all dejected and angry. So now we go to Bonnie and Sam in the kitchen. And Bonnie says, everyone at school was talking about you and Jesse. Really? Everyone? I can't. I know, right? It's the, it's the romance of the century. And Sam's like, yeah, that's how we see it. Okay. <laughs> then Bonnie asks her, did your dad freak out when you told him? And she's like, no. I mean, it was practically his idea. So Bonnie's like, he's so cool. I'd love to have him for a father. Unless I could have Billy Joel, because then that would mean my mother as Christy Brinkley, and then I would be beautiful. Right. Yeah. See, I don't have any of that in this. Oh, really? My copy. Yeah. Yeah. It probably got. Mine doesn't pick up. Pick up until she starts saying his last name. Oh, okay. But but Bonnie, you are you are beautiful. Stop that. I know. Come on. But then Sam's like, Bonnie, can we get back to reality here? And she says that she and Jesse are going to have a combination high school graduation June wedding. Okay. And her dad's going to cater it. This way they can save money for the honeymoon in Tahiti. Okay. Yeah. So she's she's playing. really uh, fantasizing yes. here. Yes. <laughs> Big time. I don't, I mean, uh, yeah. I, I can't, I'm trying to think back if like the first boyfriend I had, I thought I was going to marry him. Probably. Probably. I mean, just be, I'm not, it's just the way it was. Yeah. Like, that's what your thought process was, I think, back then, was like, is this the one I'm married? You well, know what I mean? But the, also, the thing, too, was that that is reality for my parents and right. your parents. And I think a lot of people that were older than us, yeah. Yeah, like my, right. I think my I mom think. met my dad when she was 15. Wow. So I guess it's not really that far off. And Sam's yeah. probably thinking the same thing. Her dad got married at 19, right? Right. So she's thinking, I'm locking this in yeah. after high school. <laughs> I know. And now seeing this, it's like, what is happening? Stop. Um, so they're both, they're planning to go to the same university, one with high academic standards and a salad bar in the cafeteria. Yeah. See, this is already setting it up for failure. They're planning <laughs> to go to college, all these places together. <laughs> There Which I guess to, is the theme of the episode. So there has to be a daycare center for little Jason and Jennifer, and they're the twins. Right. Bonnie's like, who is Jason and Jennifer? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Those are such '80s names yeah, too. I don't have any of that. Man, they really cut a lot of this. Episode. Yeah, they always do that. And she, Sam's like, you don't expect us to bring them to class, do you? This she Bonnie's like, oh yeah, of course not. Bonnie's getting jealous because she's yeah. thinking like, oh man, Sam has this all worked out. But oh, here's another thing too. Spoiler alert for how this show ends. But it's not Jesse, but Sam actually does get married way young. I think she's like 19 when she does. Oh get married. really? All right. Yeah. So it ended up working out anyway. Yeah. Like, well, so not with Jesse. Not with Jesse, right. but yeah. I would love to see Jesse in the reboot. Although I really want to see Mason in the reboot, but maybe both of them. They could be... Uh, <laughs> maybe they went into business together. <laughs> yeah. Some um, kind of like dealership or something. But yeah, because I feel like his personality, if he's still as socially conscious now as he was then, it would probably be a great match for Samantha. Yeah, that's true. Sam's going over names. Okay, how does Samantha Maselli Nash sound? And she's like, ah, it's too long. And then she says, how about Sam Nash? And Bonnie says, it sounds like a private eye. I know, that's actually pretty funny. <laughs> it is really funny because it does. So then she's talking about a hyphen. And they're like, oh, that's good. It's ethnic and yuppie. 
Okay. Because she's keeping Maselli, I guess, but right. then she's hyphenating it with Nash. Um, she's like, I hope it's not too long to fit on the gold American Express card. Okay, so now they're like, all right, well, let's go to the mall because I want to pick out china patterns of course because you're gonna need that for the wedding (laughs) and right then jonathan comes in and he starts doing the old um sam and jesse sitting in a tree what is that noise um, the the dogs fighting in the laundry room door great um and so sam's getting aggravated with him i feel like this is really the beginning of sam and jonathan not i mean they've had a they've had it a little rough here for a bit but they really start to kind of pick at each other yeah Around now, and it doesn't end ever. Then like kids, you know, not kids, but as they get older, and they, she's becoming more of a teenager. Right. Well, she is. Yeah. So maybe you know the separation. He's right. just an annoying little kid now. And Danny Pintaro said that their actual relationship off screen was very similar because oh, really? they started off as kids together, but then she became a teenager, and there was such an age gap between the two of them that he just kind of. He felt that she just viewed him as like an annoying little kid, and then. Oh, uh, okay. Um, but also that makes sense. They had to go. They were their only schoolmates. Like they went to school together every That's day. A good point too. So that was so probably they were rough. together quite yeah. a bit, and then they're studying different. <laughs> right. So when Sam starts to get annoyed by Jonathan, she says, "Eh, maybe we'll just rent kids for Christmas," and that made me laugh a little extra because. Before we had children of our own. Right, I mean, that's I thought of the same thing. <laughs> One year as a joke, we sent, we borrowed our friend's kids, and it actually became the kind of our future because we borrowed our friend Amy's daughters, and we posed in front of a Christmas tree, and then we sent it out to our family, and on there, it, it was like a, a link to a website where you could rent kids rent for children. Christmas. Yeah. And then if you went to that actual website, it was just... Uh, another picture of us or something. It was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that was funny. And then they were two girls. Yeah, and they were two girls, like Naturally about two years apart. Having. And then that's what we ended up having. So wow. Now was... when our kids see that Christmas picture, they're just very confused because yeah, they don't, understand what's they don't know who those two girls are because it's not them. <laughs> yeah, so then she's like, maybe we'll just rent kids for Christmas. So they get up to go to the mall. She says, I want to pick out China patterns and I want a corn dog. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That sounds like an afternoon. Yeah. So as they walk out, uh, Tony, Angela, and Mona come in. So apparently we're led to believe that up until this point, Sam has been Tony's running partner, even though we've never seen uh, Tony and Sam jog together. Right. But now, since Sam is too busy for him, he had to enlist Mona and Angela to run with him. (laughs) I know, but Mona's jacket has... Big shoulder pads. So well, of course it does. You think she was running in that? Yes, I do. Does Angela's too? Yeah, Angela's. I has guess it so. Too. Yeah, and Tony looks like uh, Tony Soprano a little bit. <laughs> the track a little suit. Track suit. <laughs> Mona says it just feels so great to push yourself. Yeah. And Angela too. She's like, it gives you a real sense of accomplishment. Tony's like, that's great. Maybe next time you'll make it around the whole block. Oh, well, that sounds like they didn't get very far. Right. Well, they and you go know like Tony, half a he mile. probably ran 10 more miles. Right, yeah, because I'm sure his jogs are like seven miles. Yeah. So he pours them some orange juice, and then he's still kind of, he's upset. He wants to talk more about what's going on with Sam and Her Jesse. jacket does have large shoulders. Oh, yeah, bags. they're huge. Is well, that who a runs in that? Angela Bauer. And I'm sure a lot of people in the 80s. I guess so, yeah. Because she had to look good, and that was the style. Tony's complaining how Sam is too busy for him, but Angela's like, well, you know, at least it's not only Jesse. She's hanging out with Bonnie. Um, they're hanging out at the mall, and then he looks on the table, and he sees that there's a bride magazine on the kitchen table. And he's like, yeah, they're hanging out reading bride magazine. Oh, boy. He opens it up, and he says, look at this, 10 tips for a happy honeymoon. And it's dog-eared. No oh boy. Which, do people still dog-ear books? I don't That's know. It's when you fold the corner down. I don't know. Use a bookmark. Don't dog-ear yeah. your books. Yeah, but this is a magazine. Yeah, magazines. Who That's cares? true. That's fine. Yeah. So he's like, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> 
It's a con- let's all calm down. Everybody again, calm down. And Angela's trying to talk him down. She's like, you know, all little girls fantasize like this. And he says, it doesn't make it right. And she's like, well, if you're upset about it, then just talk to her. But he said he feels funny talking to her about bride things. And Mona's like, you want me to do it? And then he says, no. <laughs> but Angela's looking through the actual article and she's like, listen, it's all really innocent. And she's like, you know, you want to make your travel pa- plans early. Hint two. What was hint two? Never hang your pantyhose on the shower rod. Per- shower rod. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I guess. And? Do people still wear pantyhose? Um, I hope not. N- no. If you, if you still have to wear pantyhose, I'm sorry. Our children do to dance. Well, those are tights, dance tights. <laughs> no, but like, I know in some workplaces, it was required that if you wore a skirt, you had to wear pantyhose. Yeah, good luck with that now. Yeah, right? People dress in pajamas to go to work. Yeah. I mean, when we were still physically going to a building, people And you're going to go to HR pajamas. when you go tell a woman. Right. <laughs> you need to have, uh, you need on, have on pantyhose. pantyhose, please. Right. I see too much of your leg. It's That'll making you uncomfortable. Well. Yeah. And then trick three is always go to bed with a smile. Mona says, well, the real trick is how to wake up with a smile. I know. Okay, again. Thank you, dirty. Mona. <laughs> Angela just puts her head in her hand. Like, you're not All helping. All depends on what happens to your cookie the night before. <laughs> the cookies. I don't know. The cute little fortunes. I know. The cute little fortunes that are, oh, God, that's and then awful. I love how Tony's like, would you go home? Go yeah, home. No, just get out. Go home. He just keeps saying, and then she really does leave. <laughs> I know, I know. And you don't have to tell Mona twice. I don't no. think. Like, I didn't want to run. You know, she probably didn't want to run in the first place. Right. She had dragged into that. All you're now offering here is orange juice. Now she's in this conversation right. that's useless to her. Of course, okay. I would I'm leave out. too. I'm gonna go take a nap. Yep. Now Tony sits down at the table and he's like, "Maybe I'm not cut out to be the parent of a teenager." All sad and dejected. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's been a day. <laughs> Angela's like, you're doing fine. And he says it's like a runaway train and he doesn't know how to stop it. And he doesn't understand why she had to go steady. Why can't she just look around and see other guys or just stay in her room? So he gets up and he kind of like wanders over to the sink all sad and Angela's following him. And she's like, I know that these are difficult years, but you should be happy that Sam is with a guy like Jesse. There is truth in that. Yeah, like, that's Jesse's true. Jesse's a great kid. He's so dead. if she's going to pick someone to go steady with, he's the one you want her to do it with. Um, not Even do though it they're with, talking about marriage. Right. Yeah, but that's just her, you know, thinking in her head. But Tony says he's still a guy. This is also true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Jesse is a great kid, but that doesn't mean that stuff's going to happen that Tony doesn't want to know about. That's right. And Angela says, well, at least he's not a guy like Brian James. And Tony's like, who's that? And she says, he's the quarterback. And when he yells touchdown, he's not talking about football. Yeah, another dirty little reference in this episode. So, wait, is that like a reference, like, home run? I don't or know. Or is he actually saying touchdown? <laughs> I don't know. He must be saying touchdown thinking. <laughs> right. I mean, I know in baseball there's, like, getting the first base, second base. Right. You know what I mean? What that's in comparison to. But a touchdown, I Because yeah, if maybe. he's actually telling people where to touch, then that's even dirtier than I was thinking originally. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that too. I didn't think about that. And I'm... That was talking about the fortune cookies earlier. I didn't even get that reference. Now, Tony's like, what, when did you suddenly start keeping track of the high school jocks? And yeah, Angela really. says, Sam mentioned it when we were talking about her wanting to go steady. Didn't we see their entire conversation? I guess not. We, well, we, we missed they cut away it. Yeah, and yeah, back. Yeah, they and, cut away. But this is where, you, where Tony learns. Right. So then Tony's like, oh, she mentioned going steady to you? Yeah. And she's like, yeah. And he's she. He asks her when, and she's like, "Oh, yeah, right before she, right before uh, she told uh-oh. you, yeah, yeah." Um, uh. <laughs> poor Tony. So yes. Angela, feel, what? No, nothing. And then she's like, "Oh, Tony, don't be upset." Right? Yeah. She says, "You're a wonderful father, but you can't be everything. And sometimes a girl just needs a woman to talk to." And then Tony says, "But what about me? What's wrong with me?" I know. <laughs> And there's just two full orange juice glasses that are not going to be drank. They waste no. a lot of orange juice in this show. That is true. Maybe a crew member will drink it when they're done. Mm. <laughs> but it is really cute that Sam has Angela to talk to here. Like, I know Tony wants to be as involved in Sam's life right. as possible. But 
because they've created this little family, you know, he's given her a, someone else to talk to who, like, Angela would love to be Samantha's mother, but she right. really kind of is more of like an aunt, I think. Sure. Where Sam probably feels more comfortable telling Angela things that she wouldn't be even as comfortable telling her mom because she wouldn't want to get in trouble. Where with Angela, you know, as long as she's not putting Angela in an uncomfortable position, um, as far as like Samantha's health or anything, then Angela has a little more leniency because it's not really her mom. So, and see, and I like... The interesting thing about this is that she had something that she only wanted to talk to Angela about because it involved getting in a relationship or going steady, you right. know, going steady. And she probably felt like she couldn't talk to Tony about right. it. Right. Right. And so, I mean, I think that happens. And she doesn't have a mother. So, right. um, which I know is the point. But I mean, my point is. I think we are experiencing that in this house because our oldest, I feel like there are things she only wants to talk oh, about with you. That is true. Yes. Even though she's only 10. But right. I mean, I still know that she's not going to approach me about certain things. Right. And it's not anything like, I don't think I'm, I don't make myself not approachable, but it's just, it's lady things. And, <laughs> and I know she just doesn't want to talk to me about lady things. Yeah, and I and mean, I would. I don't know how good of how much help I would be. Well, but, and, and also, I think that's what's happening. I in have this episode. always been probably um, there. I've always been really open and honest with the girls. That's true too. From I as young as I can remember. True. So I think it just kind of feel. But like, if I wasn't here, or a girl who has two fathers, like they have to figure out a way to broach those conversations, or yeah, you also introduce someone into your life that you know that that child can go okay. to or talk to, yeah. which happens a lot of times too. Yeah, sorry, um, I didn't mean to derail us, but that's my. But yeah, no, that's I mean that's the great thing about the little family they created. Right. Like he needed a mother figure for Sam. She needed a father figure for Jonathan, and even though Jonathan isn't to this point yet, right? And they probably could have explored a lot. I don't remember how much they explored that with Jonathan. Useless at this point, I know. (laughs) And then they kind of didn't really give him much to work with when he was older. But you know, like he kind of helped him through his first date and stuff, sort of. But yeah, Yeah, I mean, if I wasn't around, then I think that you would probably. I wouldn't have a choice. Right. Exactly. Uh, Okay. So. Yeah, so she's just saying, you know, she really wants just a woman to talk to. Now we go to Samantha and Jesse coming home from a date. And this isn't, no, this isn't the Saturn date, because that was that night. So this No, no, is this we're supposed to believe out. is that things have been going on for a while. Right, just because okay. of the revelation that they, oh, right, what yes. they realize okay. here in this conversation. Yes. That's what I he got. He jumps up on the bench and then he jumps back down and he says, do you know what that means? And she says, you like hopping on benches? Oh, look, we're seeing that little outside bench that they never use. Right. And all the trees that you never see when they show the exterior of the house right. or that porch. <laughs> yes. That none of this exists the on the actual house. Jesse's like, oh, it's pretty literal, Sam. A little bit of... Uh, asshole Jesse was back there for a second. Where, right. But he says, it's my spirit. My spirit is uplifted. Mm. I have a certain buoyancy. And she's like, okay, so you mean you're happy? <laughs> and he's like, yes, I'm happy. And he says, happy anniversary. We've been going steady for 19 hours. Okay, so I guess we're supposed to believe it's the next day. Yeah. Almost 24 hours right, after right. Maybe it's decided. like Sunday morning or something. Sure. Wait a minute. No, what? no, this has to be a little later. Or some time passed between the lap because she left to go to the mall with Bonnie. She ditched Bonnie at the mall and then just go well, hang out they, with Jesse. The whole conversation happened. And then time passed. And then passed. she went to the mall. I felt like this is the day after. Okay, oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. So they, hey, we're going steady. Okay, see you later. And then she went to the mall. And then it's the next day and there. Okay. It's 19 hours later, not gotcha. quite 24. Um, Whatever. <laughs> They, Sam says they said it wouldn't last. Or does mm-hmm. Jesse say that? Um, I think I she know. says it. Okay. Um, and he says, at first yeah, I she thought says it. it's funny. that I would feel trapped and labeled, but I don't. He says, I feel free and alive. And then he asks Sam, how do you feel? And she's like, yeah, yeah, I, I feel good. No, no, yeah, something's wrong. I know. He's like, do I detect that you also feel bummed out? And she says, something is missing. 
ever since we've been going mm. out, things have changed and I don't know what it is. He's like, I know what it is. Our personalities have become so fused that you've lost your sense of self. Hmm. <laughs> wow. She's like, no, I don't think that's it. Yeah. He says you become a mere shell of a person, an empty vacuum. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, so then he says, well, is it me? Like, do I have annoying habits? And she's like, yeah, some. Yeah, I but- <laughs> know. She's not dead honest with him. Yeah, a few. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think that's it either. Then he asks if there's another guy. And she's like, of course there isn't. And he's like, yeah, what am I thinking? Like, when would you have had the time? And then she says, that's it. Oh, wait a minute. No, look, she's wearing the same outfit as she was with Bonnie. She ditched Bonnie at the mall. Oh, okay. Then went and hung out with her boyfriend. And now they're back here. And I got nothing then. <laughs> it's but but it's funny because that's probably what would really happen. Like right. when teenage girls are with a guy at this age, they just kind of start ditching their friends yep. to hang out with him. She's like, that's what's bothering me. There is another guy. She goes inside and her dad is moving the furniture around and sweeping behind it. I would love to know what Tony's like calendar of the things that he does on the days that he does them. Because this is a weekend and he's just <laughs> is suddenly pulling out this credenza or whatever this is next moving to the stairs around. and sweeping behind it. So then Sam says, you know, dad, do you have a minute? And he's like, yeah, I think I got these dust balls cornered. <laughs> <laughs> Sam says she wants to talk about her and Jesse. And he's like, okay, well, you know, go ahead and have a seat. He asks her if anything's wrong. She says, no. Well, he did want to save the, pa- save the whale's pin back, but he gave me his Amnesty International tie clip instead. And he's like, oh, okay, then do you want to borrow a necktie? That's yeah, pretty funny. Like, <laughs> yeah. He's like very confused here. Right. <laughs> borrow a necktie. <laughs> Like what? Because I mean, how else are you going to wear that? Right. Right. She says, "Yeah, what would you do with it? I guess no. she could just maybe slip it on her jacket." Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> then she says, "You know, this going steady thing is a really big deal for me, and it's great, but I feel like something is missing. Oh, something uh, fell. Yeah, a cat or something." And he says, "Is it seeing your friends or seeing other guys?" And she says, "No, it's seeing you." So she says that we never really had a chance to talk about it. And I kind of raced by on that one. And Tony's like, yeah, I still feel the tire marks on my face. Mm, Very Tony. (laughs) I know. Um, So she just kind of wants to know like what he thinks about all this. He says, you know, I don't, it's not really my place to say. And it's already happened. Like we've discussed it. Right. But she says, well, we've been together a long time and we've had all the major moments Together. And he's like, well, yeah, that's my job. Then she says, do you remember the time I was in the school play and I forgot a line and everyone started laughing and you threatened to beat every person up in the audience individually? (laughs) (laughs) When do you think that happened? You think that happened in Connecticut or while they were still in Brooklyn? I don't know. Probably still in Brooklyn. (laughs) She was probably really little. I don't know. Because I don't think Connecticut people would start laughing at a child, but maybe in Brooklyn they would. Sam says, that was so sweet. And Tony says, I'm sure you would have gotten a standing ovation anyway. Um, So Sam's like, you know. Yeah, that means everybody clapped because he threatened to beat him up. Right. Better beat her up. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. So she's like, you know, growing up and going steady is great and all. And then Tony's like, but do I hear a but in there? And Mm -hmm. she's like, I guess it's kind of a but. Yeah, it's kind of a but. She said, I miss knowing that you're out there in the audience. And he says, I'm still there. I just don't have the good seats anymore. Mm. I'm sitting in the back. Mm. That's so cute. Yeah. I'm not crying. You're crying. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so true because even with just having a 10-year-old, we're already going back rows. I know. We are. Uh, so she says, you know, uh, well, how do things look from where you're sitting? And then he says, well, it's a little too late. You know, it's not really my... It's not really, I, I don't really have anything to put here. You're right. already going steady. But she's like, you know, I just really, your your approval is really important to me. So just let me know if you think this is the right thing to do. She's like, and if you don't want me to go out with him or go steady with him, then I won't. She's like, but you will be breaking the hearts of two terrific kids. Tony's like, great, as long as there's no pressure. Yeah. So he says, if you want my honest opinion, I don't think that you should go. I don't want you to go steady. And she's like, but do I hear a button there? And he's like, yeah. He's like, 
you know, even though I'm not wild about the idea, it's not my decision. And he really likes Jesse as long as she likes Jesse. So yeah, he says, I can't think of another kid I'd rather have as a steady in law. Mm. <laughs> that is cute. Uh, so then Sam says, Dad, you're better than Billy Joel. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. See, that makes sense to me now because oh, I right, didn't have that. Oh, right, because you didn't have that. No. So I'm like, okay, that I don't understand what that means. <laughs> you were as confused as Jesse was with yes, the duck. They More duck the, for right. me. <laughs> Whatever works. <laughs> yeah. But now that makes sense. And then he says, honey, I love you just the way you are. Oh, yes. I see. Very good. Now, Sam says, is it okay if I go out tonight? And he's like, yeah, sure. And then she's like, good, because I was wondering if you'd like to take me out for some Peking duck. And he's like, just me and you? He's so excited. And then he says, I'll have the prettiest girl in town. Aww. Yeah. So he's all, he's all happy, and they go, oh, yeah. As they're walking out the door, he says, let's go see if Angela's food is still on the ceiling. So wait a minute. Okay, so it is the food with, yeah, the, let's with see the chopsticks. If Angela's food's still on the ceiling. Okay. Yeah, food with chopsticks. What chops. happened? <laughs> what happened? Now we cut to later that night. Angela, Jonathan, and Mona are all in the living room. Mona and uh, Jonathan, Jonathan are playing gin. I know it's easy to forget Jonathan's name because <laughs> he's not in the episode very much. Angela says, gin, with, yeah, gin. With Sam getting so interested in astronomy, I think I'll get her a telescope for her birthday. Mona says, mm. make that two. Because there's a hunky widower down the street whose window shade is Yeah, broken. that's creepy. <laughs> that is creepy. I mean, just see how Mona's setting and up shop out there with a telescope looking in somebody's window. Now, when we saw Tony move... With a broken move, window shade. She's seen, trying to see more than just... Yeah, she's probably climbing trees. Oh, boy. Now, when we saw Tony move into Mona's apartment, there was a telescope in the kitchen. Oh, she already had one. That's what I was wondering, if it was hers and she left it there, or if it was one of the guys that brought it over for Tony so he can st- <laughs> spy so on someone. So he can someone. spy on yeah. naked people with broken Angela windows. just gives a shake of her head and a look of disgust. Know, as usual. <laughs> Tony comes into the living room and he's like, it's oh, funny, it's my, fam- my favorite family all together. But then he says, where's my favorite daughter? Right then, Sam comes in. Oh, man, Tony had a really nice-looking plate of cookies there. Mm -hmm. I got distracted. Sorry. (laughs) Right then, Sam comes in and says, Come on, everyone. I want you to come outside. You have to see the sky. It's so beautiful. I want to show you what I learned at the observatory. Right. Jonathan's like, Do we have to go right now? I have Grandma on the ropes. Yep. Mona says, Jin. Yeah. And he's so like, he what? thought she was he was going to beat her. Yeah. So you know, wait, I'm sorry. What is on the ropes? Well, mean? on the ropes is on the verge of defeat or collapse. Oh, Help, helpless, as in they acknowledge that their campaign, quote unquote, was on the ropes. The expression alluding to a boxer forced back to the ropes oh, of the ring that, oh, and leaning against sense. them for support. Right. So like, if you're on the rope, you're having to grab the ropes. You're just about knocked out. Right. And then she beats him. So anyway. That, okay, that's, yeah. that makes sense. Now. I know. I yeah. thought that's a kind of a cool. I got it on the ropes. See, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sure, it's very old. <laughs> right. but. So Jonathan's like, "All right, well, let's go see some stars right. then." He's done. So they get up, and then Mona says to Sam, "So you're telling me that you sat in the dark with Jesse, and you just looked at stars?" Hmm. <laughs> and Sam's like, "Yeah, Mona." It's cute that Sam called her Moan, too, because that's what Tony always calls her. And then Tony says, that's my girl. Like, Sam's going to say anything else while her dad's in the living room. (laughs) Exactly. I'm sure Sam looked at some stars, but there was probably some making out going on as well, too. That'd be something. So they go outside, and they're all looking up at the stars, which I guess there's no ceiling? Or maybe they're looking out from underneath this little porch that we never see that isn't on the actual house. Yeah. And there's like I'll a... I'll try to figure it out. There's a tree right there that's totally in the way. But Again. okay, whatever. Yeah. Angela says, I love stargazing. It makes you realize that you are just a tiny pin in the pin cushion of the universe. Mm-hmm. Tony says he always thinks of it as a stitch on the baseball in the big guy's glove. Yeah. Stitch of the baseball in the big guy's glove. <laughs> And then they see, uh, Sam points out the Big Dipper. Jonathan says, this is the same sky that the cavemen looked at. And then Sam says, yeah, and people in the 50s. (laughs) Funny. (laughs) 
I know. I had an experience like that with the kids recently. We were driving on the road, and Isla or Avi can't remember said, "Mom, when you were a kid, were there cars?" Oh my god! I, know. I was oh. like, "Yes, there were cars." Like you watch Stranger Things. That's when I was a kid. Right, right. There are cars. So, <laughs> but then I think, like God. I remember thinking, like trying to imagine what it was like when my mom was a kid, when I was a kid, and that's what those kids think of us. I know. A car is really? Oh. <laughs> I know. I mean, maybe she just got confused. I know. I was like, there were cars when Nana was a kid. Right. Well, you got around think? on horseback. <laughs> Um, okay, so then uh, Mona says that it looks like a diamond tiara in the sky. Jonathan says it looks like a giant connect the dot puzzle. Angela says it looks like Rockefeller Center mm. at Christmas. Everyone's really loving this sky. And then Tony says, I love this galaxy. Mm. And that is the end of the episode. Okay, nice, I'm going to go. Nice ending. Yeah, super cute. I love this. I really do like this episode a lot. I'll go first. My rating for this was a 7.5. Okay. Yes, I think mm. um, it's just, it's, sometimes we feel like these episodes don't have a lot in them, but I honestly felt like this episode actually had quite a bit in it. Like a lot happened. Yeah, right. Even though it only spans like a day or so. Yeah, I agree. But we had like the great conversation with her and Angela. We had Tony feeling upset that he was being left out. I love the conversation with Angela and the Tony in the kitchen. There was just a lot of relationship and, um, and not relationship with Tony and Angela, but just family relationship stuff that came up and was dealt with in the episode that I thought was really cute. All right. Mona said creepy stuff again. As usual. (laughs) I mean, I, Jonathan could have been used a little better, but uh, I don't know. I know. I think I just feel like sometimes they have trouble placing him in yes, these episodes always. sometimes. Yeah. Which we discussed before. Yeah. But overall, I thought it was super cute and it was a really sweet look at like a dad letting his daughter go. And mm. then her act, she missed him. Like at the end, she wanted to go have dinner with him, which I thought was really cute. Would that really happen in real life? Probably, Probably not. not. <laughs> But it's a sitcom kid, so yeah. it was really cute. Yeah. But like, even our, I mean, I think as a parent at this point, you just like need to extend the invitation or like the kids still want to hang out right. with you. Right. They just, you know, there's other things going on. But like you and Isla went out recently with a mall and she had a great time. Yeah. It was, it was pretty great. Yeah. I had and a they, good time myself. They still enjoy like hang, especially one-on-one time. They really enjoy still. So. Yeah. That was great. But who knows? They're not 14 yet or 15 or whatever she is. Right. Which is why I guess I still have to try to keep some kind of bond. Right. Right. Go in now. Yeah. Uh, Just just focus on the little one. (laughs) Get a head start. (laughs) Oh, it's too late with the big one. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) All right. Your turn. Um, Yeah. I get the same rating. I give it a seven and a half. Okay. Good. Right. That's what you gave it. I did. Yeah. Um, For pretty much all the same reasons. You know, it was a nice look into. You know, Samantha's, yeah, she's growing up, she's, she's gay dating, um, and it just her and, and Angela connecting like a mother and a daughter was nice. Yeah, and then cute. um and then Tony eventually finds out and like she doesn't know how to approach him. I don't know. It and it it just had a nice feel. Um I mean I got a little confused when she said that when she said to Jesse that yes, we're spending too much time together, I thought maybe they were like pulling back the reins and separating i didn't realize at first that she's realizing she's not seeing enough of tony right right so, yeah, i yeah. don't know but i think which you were is, supposed to think that. which is a bit be a little unrealistic yeah. but anyway um but like overall and it had a nice little ending like him, them as like a family again mm-hmm. you know or whatever so yeah same rating for the for pretty much the same reasons who's the boss around here me or my mother or maybe it's you i it was a toss-up for me this was yeah. a hard one to pick um, but I think in the end, uh, I mean, maybe it's not such a hard one. To, you have to go. It, it was a toss up between Tony and Samantha okay. to me, um, and for each for different reasons. But I'm gonna go with Samantha in the end okay. because of the more like grown up or mature decisions that she ends up making in the end. Like, you know what I mean? She's like, "Oh, I'm going steady," and she, it's all about Jesse, and right. then she realizes that she's leaving her father out of this, and then. Obviously, kind of writes the ship by 
going back and straightening things out with him and then going to dinner with him with the Peking mm-hmm. duck and mm-hmm. everything. So, um, I mean, I almost thought it was Tony just because of like, even though he was kind of lost there for a while, he still like waited patiently for her to kind of come back and. Oh, that's a good point. To- talk I to him. Really understand he didn't why it really. Would be Tony. He kind of freaked out, and you know, we were like, at some points we're like, you know, everybody calm down here, but right. he didn't really go off the deep end necessarily. Um, I mean, he was still as Tony, you know, right. Tony being Tony. But anyway, in the end, I guess it would have to be Samantha. Yeah, that's who I went with um, because she laid it down with. Jesse in the beginning, like, I want to go steady. Right. I don't want any mutually exclusive, whatever, whatever. Which means being going steady. Pretty much, yeah. Um, and then she made the decision that she wasn't seeing her dad enough and then went and had the talk with him. Right. And then, yeah, asked him out on a date, which was cute. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you can reach us at Who's the Boss Podcast on Instagram, Who's the Boss Pod one on Twitter. On Facebook, our page is the Who's the Boss podcast page, or go to anchor.fm slash WTB podcast, and there you can leave us a voice message. The next episode we're going to cover is Tony and the Dream Tones. And I'm going to be honest, I don't not think I've fan. rewatched this episode. Since oh, I was going to say, you're not very, a fan. Right. I don't know. I mean, we'll see. It's just never one that, like, I don't know. I just kind of feel like it's one of those little pet projects where Tony Danza wanted to sing, and so they brought people on so he could sing. <laughs> that's but a good one. Who that's knows? That's a good example. <laughs> who knows um, what I'm going to think when we rewatch it. All right. So thank you, everyone. All right. Yeah. Bye. Thanks. Bye. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and give a big thumbs up. And tell all your friends. And maybe you can tell your grandma, your mother, and y- your sister or brother. Maybe you have no siblings. Tell your dog and cats. Bye.